Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Good to have you with us. I'm Jane McCarthy. Pro-choice supporters across the country are protesting new laws restricting abortion. So far this year, eight states have passed laws limiting abortion rights. Krem 2's Alexa Block spoke with people on both sides of the argument ahead of a pro-choice rally going on right now in downtown Spokane. Alexa. That's right, the rally just kind of wrapped up. People are kind of making their way, um, leaving the city hall area here. I'm just gonna step aside and let you take a quick look now. Uh, they had a, several speakers um, address the crowd, and as you mentioned, they were here to talk and address, talk about and address the issue that they see with states passing anti-abortion legislation. I had a chance to speak with some pro-choice supporters who say that they're concerned that the anti-abortion movement is growing stronger. We um, need to stand strong um, because we are we know ourselves and we need to trust women and so i feel like the message that's being put out there is that women should not be trusted uh, now now the abortion debate is certainly heating up and groups like the church at Planned Parenthood want to say the pro-life church will be holding a worship service outside Planned Parenthood tomorrow, much like the one you see here. Pastor Ken Peters says he started the church to speak out against abortion, but he doesn't want to incite violence or aggression. We feel like it's, it's persecuting a people group, a very young people group. Um, you can't see them but we believe it's persecuting and mistreating a, a people group so we don't feel like justice is being done. And so the, as I said, the demonstration has wrapped up here. Again, people are um, headed out. If you want some details on the church at Planned Parenthood event tomorrow, you can head to creme.com. Reporting in downtown, Alexa Block, Creme 2 News. Central Washington University is honoring a fallen officer in Kittitas County. The university just established an endowed scholarship fund for Officer Ryan Thompson in his name. The school's alumni association teamed up with the campus police department to create the scholarship. Officer Thompson was a campus police officer from 2007 to 2013. Members of the alumni association say it was important to honor his memory. The scholarship will fund rather will provide financial aid to students who are pursuing a career in law enforcement. Washington just became the first state to allow human composting. Governor Jay Inslee signed that bill into law today. So we want to know what you think about this. Would you choose this option over traditional methods? You can head to creme.com slash vote and click or click the vote now tab on our Creme 2 mobile app. So human composting will be legal by May of next year. One company has been waiting for this for a long time. Katrina Spade is the CEO of Recompost. Spade says the process is more environmentally friendly compared to more traditional methods. Using natural materials like straw and wood chips, Recompost can break down a body in three to seven weeks. The families can visit the facility during that time. And in the end, the families can take the soil and use it as they choose. If families do not want the soil, Recompost plans to partner with conservation groups in Washington to use it elsewhere. As for the cost, the average burial can range from $8,000 to $25,000. Cremation can cost up to $6,000. Spade says Recompose plans to charge about $5,500. We so, asked you at the start of the story what you thought about this, and mm -hmm. you've since weighed in. Yeah, about 56% saying they like tradition and 45% percent saying, yeah, I think I like it. Yeah, continue to vote if you'd like to do so. Okay, in other news tonight, when the Eagle Creek fire burned through the Columbia River Gorge back in 2017, it shut down large sections of hiking trails. Almost two years later, several popular trails are still closed. Officers with the U.S. Forest Service do not have a timeline of when the trails will reopen. However, they do note that some trails could remain closed for years. The biggest danger right now is loose rock. Forest Service officers have set up a barrier fence to keep the roadways clear there. The trails are closed so hikers don't disturb the land and cause a rock slide. The ground has to stabilize again before anyone's allowed in that area. 
Well, a few showers made their way across the inland northwest today. Here in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene, we saw a little bit of sun today. Pretty nice weather all in all. Tom Sherry in the Weather Center tonight tracking what we need to know for the rest of the week. Tom? Yeah, we had sunshine during the first part of the day. And as you can see right now, the clouds have really begun to move in. This was all part of the forecast. And we're seeing some showers that are occurring now to the south of us, mostly along the Oregon and Washington border. But we've had a few light showers in southern Spokane County as well. But again, no big uh, areas of rainfall and when I were just tracking cloudy skies throughout the overnight hours and that will let our overnight low actually only drop down to around 50 degrees and then we'll see a high tomorrow of 70 under partly to mostly cloudy skies. We'll look for wind out at, uh, at times uh, gusting up to 20 miles an hour. That's overnight and early tomorrow morning, uh, predominantly out of the northeast. Always look ahead to the weekend, and this weekend is special because it is the Memorial Day weekend, the unofficial start of summer. My gosh, above average temperatures right now in the computer models. 72 Saturday, 74 Sunday, 76 on Memorial Day. I'll have the rest of your 10-day forecast coming up in a few minutes. Sounds good, Tom. Thank you very much. Governor Jay Inslee declared a drought emergency for parts of Washington. Well, we're just at the beginning stages of drought. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick explains why conditions will likely get worse over the summer. Drought emergencies now cover about half of the state with large portions of western and northern Washington included. For the inland northwest, this hits the Okanagan, Kettle Falls, and Colville areas. The drought declaration cites a small snowpack for these areas. The snow water equivalent for parts of the Cascades is as low as 20% of normal. The upper Columbia Mountains only have half of their normal snowpack, and the Spokane area is at about 55% normal. Northern Idaho isn't faring much better, with less than 70% of normal snow water equivalent. But the situation is much better farther south. Right now, Washington is one of the driest spots in the nation. Moderate drought conditions are already being reported across one third of the state and abnormally dry conditions a stage below drought for 71%. And that is likely to worsen over this coming summer. A hot June, July and August outlook for Washington typically dries out the ground faster. And with snowpack levels already much lower than normal, there's less available moisture to keep the soil hydrated. And don't get your hopes up for much rain to keep the drought at bay over the summer as July, August and September each average less than one inch of rain for Spokane and several inland northwest areas. So it would take a significant and out of character rainfall to reverse drought conditions over the summer.